humanity discovered the essence of the human soul, known as Adia, the ability to materialize different objects. This badass ability made human weapons obsolete, forcing them to train people with Adia. The protagonist Park Jinsung, known as a lousy F rank, was actually an S rank in reality. However, he hid his ability to prove that a soul's worth can't be defined by rank, a truly cultured mindset. Edia can be seen harmonizing inside the human body, known as the soul's essence, and at some point humans become aware of this power and learn to manifest it. A boy can be seen saying that his Edia has a long sword shape. Different people have different Edia, which can manifest into different shapes, I know what you're thinking about. <laughs> yeah, boy. Edia can even be used in the form of sentences, as this boy said a few words which took the form of a long sword which amazed the other boy. Humans can manifest Edia as a physical object at any time. The other kid, when asked about his Edia, explained that his Edia was very weak as it was just about making bricks and soil a very useful skill Bob the Builder could have used. This was a major power difference for this reason humanity began to assign ranks for Edia, explaining the power level of the individuals. The weaker boy was dubbed to be rank E, truly showcasing the difference in Adia's power levels. Souls that were used to be equal now had power levels and ranks. The stronger boy stopped being friends with the other boy, showing us his insecurity issues, showing that Adia had become an integral part of people's lives as people were labeled. Schools became a place for making weapons and using the students as tools. Those same schools also helped the country's status by helping in the front lines of the war, using the higher Edia rank students bro has enemies. This led to even greater disparity among people creating a social order. Our recap is set in one of those schools, the Hyundai Special Training High School. In the school, a few boys surround a boy seemingly to fight him, but he tries to run away but is surrounded by them. One of the boys attacks the other boy before summoning out his Edia, which is a giant steel axe. Talk about pulling out a gun in a fist fight. The student is from the other class who is fighting the class 10 students. The boy lunges at the class 10 student, who uses his Tanfa Edia to try to defend himself from the attack while clenching his butt cheeks as he somehow barely manages to block it. However, the boy gets through and manages to overpower the class 10 student. The class 10 student calls over this Detective Conan looking ape boy who also happens to be our protagonist, Park Jin Sung. When the students tell him to help them with the fight, he just stands there and tells them that he'll do more harm than good and just seemingly wimps out. This pisses off his classmates who call him a worthless loser who doesn't have the spine to stand up for his fellow students. The students warn that they will deal with him after they are done fighting. And after they lose the class, 10 students attack Park Jinsung near the classroom shortly after for not helping them during the fight and take their anger out on him. They curse him, telling him that they lost because of him while stepping on him like Captain Irwin stepping on his comrades. The students curse their luck that they happen to be paired with a worthless fool like Park Jin Sung, as he is the last in the whole school. Bro fell off harder than Kanye West after his divorce. Park Jin Sung apologizes for being so weak and emphasizes that being the last in school wouldn't have helped them a lot anyway. This pisses one of the students who tries to hit him in the face, which is evaded by Park Jin Sung, as if he is our trusty neighborhood Spider Man, showing us a glimpse of his true power or not. Who knows? The student tells Park Jin Sung to die, to which Park Jin Sung makes a sarcastic remark saying it's a bit too much and that they shouldn't be so rude considering that they are fellow students. The student tells Park Jin Sung that they are tired today as they were beaten up earlier before fighting him, so they will only hit him 10 times for every member of their class affected by his stupid weakness. The math isn't mathing with this one as this is highlighted by Park Jin Sung who tells them that it doesn't make sense. Park Jin Sung tries to run away from the goons, which makes most of the class laugh at him as they call him a fly. Park Jin Sung is eventually cornered as he requests them to not use Adia. This isn't a problem for them, so they agree without any hesitation. Furthermore, this wouldn't get them in trouble with the teacher. The use of Adia is prohibited inside the school. After making sure that he has nothing else to say, they start to beat him. They beat him to a pulp while mocking him for how unlucky they are to have an F-ranked loser like him in their class. They also mock him by calling him trash, asking why he even comes to school as a worthless F rank. Park Jin Sung looks hurt as he explains that their team didn't lose because he is weak and that they lost because they themselves are losers. They get furious as their superiority complexes kick in and they ask him how dare he talk back to them while being a mere F class. The teacher arrives at the class and tells the students to take their seats saving Park Jin Sung from getting beaten up once more. The teacher then announces that he has important news for them which makes the bullies annoyed as they are forced to take their seats. The bullies hold demeanor changes, drawing a very close resemblance to Ellen DeGeneres who has different behavior behind the camera. Meanwhile, the other students greet the teacher happily as they ask him if he's finally getting married. Park Jin Sung feels uneasy for some reason, maybe sensing what is about to come. 
The teacher tells everyone to pay attention, but Byun Gyeong, who is a typical class bully, even though he only has standard strength and is overall average in school, asks the teacher if some weird proposal came from the school again. The teacher tells him to put his leg down as it's not break time. Byung Gi Young asks the teacher if he can stop putting restrictions on them, but the teacher informs him that he's not the one who calls the shots. After setting him aside, he announces that this is because of the performance of the third year students who are proficient in their idea. The teacher explains that their school has been recognized by the government and will soon become a pilot testing ground for testing military systems. It will be on par with the American school system putting them in the world race once again. The teacher also explains that they will be given a military rank based on their abilities which causes the whole class to perk up as this concerns their future. The teacher tells them that they are all comrades now as the teachers of each class have been given ranks from second lieutenants to platoon commanders as well, and he received the rank of platoon commander giving the students a glimpse of his power. Byung Gyeong asks if they are platoon 10 because they are class 10 or are they class 10 because they are platoon 10. The teacher reminds him that he isn't Suguru Geru and asks him to stop complaining as their name is from the government itself. He also explains that they will also be performing salutes like in the military talk about getting higher education, right? The teacher explains that a lot of people will try to recruit the students from their school from now on and they are all now basically soldiers. Park Jin Sung still feels uneasy as he asks the teacher, what if they don't want to do the things in military fashion like any sane person would ask? The teacher ditch slaps him by saying they can just request the government to transfer them to another school if they don't want to participate. The teacher suggests Park Jin Sung to think carefully about this opportunity as it will play a major role in their life in the future. The other students also ask the teacher why they are suddenly turning into a military school without any reason. This makes the teacher explain that it is due to the performance of their third years who excel in this power and are certified gigachads, unlike them who are still level 1 crooks, especially Park Jin Sung. The teacher also announces that everyone has received the rank of sergeant as he pulls out their equipment. The students ask if they all are going to receive it to which the teacher replies that indeed but most of the second years will also be Lance Corporals. The teacher tells them that they can reassess their rank with him at any time and he will do his best to judge them fairly just like the American law system sure that will go fine right? The teacher also tells them that even though their ranks won't be pressed on their uniforms like soldiers they can still paste them on their military notebooks later on. The teacher then informs the class that one student out of the whole school was unable to receive the rank of even a private and then reveals that student to be none other than our boy Park Jin Sung. He informs them that he will be starting as a trainee soldier. Talk about getting shunned harder than Will Smith got by his wife. In the teacher's office, Park Jin Sung arrives as the teacher tells him that they should discuss his future and suggests he should consider transferring to another school, talking about a slap right on the face like Will Smith to Chris Rock. Park Jin Sung looks concerned as he asks the teacher what he means to which the teacher tells him it is already hard for him and it will only become harder once they transition into a military school. The teacher is worried that Park Jin Sung won't last long here just like CM Punk's UFC career. Park Jin Sung requests the teacher to look into his hidden potential and have some faith in him as he might suddenly do well one day. Talk about a miracle in it. The teacher looks at him for the first time in the eyes and laughs harder than most people at Dave Chappelle's controversial jokes. The teacher calls him a comedian while mocking him right in his face. Park Jin Sung is disappointed as he realizes that the first time the teacher looked at him was just to mock him and laugh. The teacher tells him since the ranking system is going to be established soon, he can't take care of him all the time, so he must look out for himself and not get beaten up as if he has ever cared for him before. Park Jin Sung realizes that the teacher knew all along about him being bullied and beaten up, the teacher just considers him to be a lousy f rank noob with no potential. Park Jin Sung concludes that the teacher probably thinks he will quit on his own after getting beaten up every day since he didn't want an f rank in his class. Park Jin Sung becomes dead serious for a moment and asks the teacher if there are ranks to the souls. The teacher bursts out in laughter as Park Jin Sung laughs with him acting like it was a joke. The teacher tells him of course there are which only makes Park Jin Sung disappointed as he disagrees by telling him he doesn't think that way. The following day, the teacher tells everyone to report in a military format rather than their usual attendance. They start with the 10th platoon's first squad which has all of their personnel present, the second squad also has all 11 present, as the teacher calls the third squad to report as no one answered. Byun Gyeong is the third squad leader, and he makes a joke by saying a total of 10 are in their squad, two are missing and one person is crap referring to our boy Park Jin Sung, talk about a generational aura debt moment. Byun Gyeong expresses that he wishes Park Jin Sung would disappear before saying 8 are present in his squad missing out on Park Jin Sung. 
Everyone in the class points at Park jin -sung, mocking him for missing out on the attendance, asking if trainees should be included in the count as well. But the teacher ignores this by saying no problems with the attendance and also taking a jab at Park jin -sung. The teacher then announces that they will have a field event rather than their normal class today. He explains that the government squads will be hiding among them as if they are in an Agent Zero H movie. He mentions that even the schools don't know where they are as their job is to analyze how the students adapt to the environment changing so suddenly. The students tell the teacher to get to the point so the teacher explains that they will be doing squad battles among the first, the second, and the third year. The matchups have already been decided by the scouts, but the students remark that the third years will probably just go against each other and won't be interested in them. Park Jin Sung, in an attempt to cope, thinks he can just pass the time by spectating. The teacher asks Byun Gyeong if his rank is C rank, which embarrasses him, but when asked about his combat ability, Byun Gyeong screams that he can beat any opponent with ease. The teacher then reveals that his squad will be in the first battle facing off against none other than the third year's first platoon's first squad, aka the strongest squad. This causes them to almost crap their pants in fear as they are about to face the tiger while they are nothing but little squirrels. The teacher also tells the third squad to go to the field, which makes Byun Gyeong look like the famous screen painting by the artist Edvard Munch. The teacher tells them to prepare in 20 minutes and then gather outside while the rest of the students mock Park Jin Sung on their way out, calling him a trainee, and that he will hold everyone's evaluation back talk about a low blow. Meanwhile, the third squad looks horrified and depressed as they realize that they are done for. They wonder how they could win with an F rank like Park Jin Sung. On the other hand, our protagonist is chilling in his sleep without any worries of the world which makes Byu and Gyeong angry as he calls out his name, to which he responds by calling Byu and Gyeong his sergeant rank. Byu and Gyeong slaps Park Jin Sung out of frustration telling him how he pisses him off as they will be losing this fight due to him being a weakling. Byung Gyeong emphasizes by saying that Senior, I and Sungko will be in the first squad so they are basically like a fish on a cutting board. He realizes that even with all of their class aces together, it's going to be very hard which makes Park Jin Sung joke if they are going to lose anyway it won't matter if he's here or not. He smiles in his tee he smile which pisses Byung Gyeong even more as it reminds him of his favorite character from Genshin Impact, Venti. So he cusses him saying that barely losing and easily losing are very different things. Byung Gyeong tells Park Jin Sung that if they lose because of him he will have hell to receive but Park Jin Sung takes a jab by saying that his rank isn't high enough so it won't matter anyway, ain't he a cheeky little rascal? Byung Gyeong is pissed off and asks him to repeat to which Park Jin Sung replies that it was nothing but the passing wind. Byung Gyeong sighs as he says he can't beat him up since they have to be out on the field where hungry hyenas are waiting to devour on their fresh and tender meat. Park Jin Sung makes light of the situation by saying that being beaten up by soldiers in high ranks is the same. This makes Byun Gyeong mock him by saying he'll give him the role of the sergeant to which Park Jin Sung agrees as he is the leader. Byun Gyeong then orders him to be his personal shield making him lose all the aura he had left before talking him to the field and holding him in front of himself like a shield. Talk about mad disrespect. In the field, the teacher checks the mic while everyone is aligned for the battle. They're the 3rd Squadron's 1st Platoon's 1st Squad Leader and the 2nd Squadron's 10th Platoon's 3rd Squad Leader are announced while the teacher asks them if they are ready. The teacher tells the first squad leader A. Chan Sungo to show off all his skills as the scouts are watching, to which A. An Sungo assures the teacher that he will do his best. The squads are then told to take their positions, which makes the third squad scared as they are about to get their cheeks clapped and sigh, there's no lube to help them. The battle starts as each squad leader receives a bracelet. Byung Gya Young drags Park Jin Sung like a rag doll as the teacher explains that the bracelet uses Adia's power to protect the users from harm, but the downside is that it breaks after receiving a certain amount of damage. Byun Gya Young takes Park Jin Sung's bracelet so they can last longer. Byun Gya Young tells Park Jin Sung to shut up and act like a shield, which makes him sigh as he thinks that even zoo animals get better treatment than this. The teacher explains since there is a massive power difference, just like the Beast Titan vs Irvin's army, so the third squad just needs to hold on for five minutes for it to count as their win. The third squad members are horrid as they think they won't even be able to last that long with these members and will be embarrassed in front of everyone. Park Jin Sung copes by thinking that if he can win, he will ask the teacher to reconsider his transfer. Both sides are ordered to salute to which Byung Yin Gyeong reluctantly agrees. The fight starts and Byung Yin Gye Young immediately runs away while dragging Park Jin Sung behind him. The whole squad is shocked as the leader runs away like a scared little puppy with another scared puppy on his back. Byung Gye Young thinks that they only have to survive for five minutes but the squad is worried about formations and instructions as the first squad approaches them with Jojo-style poses. 
Byung Yang apologizes to them by saying that they should just protect him and let the five minutes pass. The first squad makes quick work of most of the third squad easily by just taking their bracelets off from their hands. The third squad can't resist as they are swatted like flies making Byung Gyeong look even more horrified. Furthermore, one of the first squad members spots him and lunges at him, which adds to more of his worries. Byun gi -young uses Park Jin-sung as a meat shield, not the kind of he tells him to block the attack to which Park Jin-sung asks how he is supposed to block when he is just a useless F rank. Byun gi -young panics as he tells Park Jin-sung to block however he can, while a first squad member approaches like if she is Drake who has allegations of approaching some younger artists in the industry. Park Jin-sung remembers the teacher's words telling him to transfer as he gets a little serious dodging the attack like it is nobody's business, calling it irritating. The first squad member wonders if it's an internal conflict, as they all are splitting up like ramen when put into boiling water. She lunges at Park Jin-sung who effortlessly avoids her attempt to get his bracelet. She is surprised and quickly equips her adia which is revealed to be a flashy awe armor making Park Jin-sung amazed as he compliments her adia for being both strong and beautiful at the same time. She tells him to stop playing dumb and reminds him that she realizes that he reacted to her speed. Park Jin-sung acts dumb and points out that Byun Gyeong should be more of a concern for her as he shakes it off like some not-so-smart Americans with the local authorities. Three minutes are left on the clock as Park Jin-sung tries to drag the fight as long as he can as he reminds himself that he has to go on, no matter what. In an attempt to drag the time, he asks the senior girl if he can call her big sister and assures that he isn't flirting. But her deadly aura makes him take back his statement and he agrees to just call her senior sister. The senior sister isn't amused and orders him to pull out his adia and get serious. Park Jin-sung realizes that stalling won't help him in this situation. Senior sister tells him to get serious or else she will just fight her as he is, which makes Park Jin-sung panicked as he tries to tell her that introductions are important but this only pisses her off even more as this is only wasting further time. Park Jin-sung decides to stop playing around and reveal his area. He tells her that he is taking it out, and he counts down while senior sister looks concerned, but the worries are seemingly unwarranted as his idea is revealed to be a tiny F-ranked dagger without any special skills. Talk about being anticlimactic. Park Jin-sung proudly flaunts his small dagger, which makes Jai wonder if Park Jin-sung is the F-ranked student to which he nods his head in approval. Senior sister looks like a parent disappointed by their useless child as she sighs but Park Jin-sung retorts that even though his dagger is small, it has a great personality. Jai not wanting to waste more time with fodder like Park Jin-sung goes towards Byun Gi-young, who is still running. Senior sister tells Park Jin-sung that he might have reacted just by pure luck and leaves as she is disappointed by his tiny dagger, while Park Jin-sung tells her to stay in a very similar situation to some men these days. Park Jin-sung warns he will be forced to stab her from the back if she doesn't turn around, don't even go there. Jai Sr. tells him to stop wasting her time before realizing that Park Jin-sung is already there attacking her. Jai Sr. now surprised barely blocks his attack with her armor after swiftly realizing that it didn't do a lot of damage, while Park Jin-sung copes hard. The whole class laughs at this encounter seeing how weak Park Jin-sung is bro is not him. Jai Sr. tells Park Jin-sung that even if he has good reflexes his idea doesn't do any damage. Park Jin-sung thought that this must have bought the team some time, before looking at the clock and realizing there are still two minutes left. Jai Sr. approaches Byung Gyeong with the charismatic Jojo walk that we all love. Byung Gyeong cusses his whole team by calling them losers who couldn't even last five minutes. Jai Sr. mocks him by saying he shouldn't be saying this while running away for the whole time. Byung Gyeong tries to bullshit his way out by saying that he was just going easy on her hoping she would fall for it and tells her to stop right there. Jai taking none of that tells him to go all out before quickly closing the distance and asking him to show his merit. Byung Gyeong hits his foot on a rock while backing away finally seeing his opportunity for a breakthrough. Jai unaware of this tells him to show his power to which Byung Gyeong promptly responds as he uses his skill. Park Jin Sung looks shocked as he wonders if Byung Gyeong is hiding his power. He warns Jai as Byung Gyeong extracts a massive rock from the ground, Mans was packing. He finally reveals his abilities which are to extract something and swing it. It's a B-rank Edia, which he was hiding as a C-rank. Byung Gyeong's ability allows him to use any stuck object as a weapon ignoring its weight according to his capability. The class wonders if Byung Gyeong will be alright since his opponent is a third year. Jai Sr. looks confident as she figures out that he is trying to find an object big enough to use as a weapon. Byung Gya Young commends her by calling her incredible third year before promptly telling her to frick off sheesh. Byung Gya Young calls her a stepping stone in his rise to the top. Byung Gya Young talks trash without realizing that the first squad leader is standing behind him looking like he's about to knock him to another galaxy. 
The squad leader stops his edging session as he quickly pins Byun Gyeong down like a rag doll. Byun Gyeong is disappointed wondering why a third year would pull a cowardly sneak attack on him. Jai Sr. blocks the giant rock, saying that it's stronger than she thought. She witnesses as her squad leader uses his Adina for the first time in the battle. Jai asks him why he interfered knowing she could have dealt with it on her own. The squad leader reminds her that he must protect his squad when it is needed taking a slight jab at her which pisses her off. She asks him if doubted her ability to handle this on her own. He assures Joy that she could have taken care of him but Byeon Gye Young might have hurt her. Byeon Gye Young tries to sneak an attack from the back as the first squad leader uses his ADL. I'll definitely catch you a very simple name, ain't it? His ADL allows him to cover a specific distance ignoring time if the target is in range, his combat ability is revealed to be A and his ADL rank is B. The squad leader sets his eyes on Park Jinsung next looking like a lion hunting its prey, a considerable upgrade being an animal rather than a tool. Park Jinsung quickly says he surrenders. An Sung Go ignoring the surrender rather asks him how he knew about Byung Yun Gi even before he used his ability, warning Jai right after. He asks for his motive. Park Jinsung makes an excuse saying his leader can be a savage and just warned Jai Sr. out of caution, still a better excuse than what did his lawyers made. An Sung Go calls him a horrible liar before approaching him. He uses his idea to catch the distance throwing Park Jinsung's tiny dagger with a good personality still right out of his hand. Park Jinsung shocks everyone as he swiftly grabs the dagger with his other hand before pushing Aid Sungo with an attack. Jinsung tells him not to disturb someone when they are talking, bro is packing heat. An Sungo now released that this might be a tough fight takes his guard up and asks Jinsung who he really is. Park Jinsung keeps his power hidden and tells him that he is a trainee recruit Park Jinsung with a lousy F rank idea. H. Un Sung Go, clearly shocked by this information, reluctantly agrees before realizing that there is only a minute left. Park Jinsung tries to make small talk trying to pass the time while almost crapping himself he tries to divert his attention to the crowd instead wishing the time would go faster. A. N. Sung Go asks him if he's trying to stall the time and tells him that he hates people like these. Park Jinsung tells him that an F rank like him can't do anything in this situation. An Sung Go asks him why isn't he trying to put any effort into winning. Park Jinsung asks him what he can do alone. A. N. Sung Go tells him that he isn't warning him but advising him instead. Achan Sungo reminds him that the scouts will transfer students who fall short of their criteria which makes Park Jinsung realize that there is no way out and he'll have to fight seriously. Jinsung tells Achan Sungo that he doesn't want to transfer. An Sungo advises him to fight properly in that case hyping him up more than some people hyped Garancho in the Manchester United football team. Park Jinsung realizing there is no way to bullshit his way out of this one decides to reveal his true power. His veins pop out like he's about to turn into a werewolf as a red aura engulfs him. His F rank idea changes as he smiles like the Batman who laughs. His physical abilities increase by three folds. He can now identify his opponent's vital points, as well as their idea. He can perceive the most effective route to destroy his opponents. The bloodlust can only be turned off if he destroys the opponent idea or kills them. He turns out to be a certified badass as the overwhelming bloodlust engulfs him. His hidden idea is revealed to be absolute murder, which is an S rank idea. Park Jinsung shocks H. N. Sungo as he realizes that his F rank dagger wasn't all of his idea. H. N. Sungo goes fully on guard and immediately uses his ability. Park Jinsung's personality also changes as he mocks Park Jinsung for only being a B rank. He calls his ability shittier than he thought. Anshan Sungko, now annoyed out realizing that Park Jinsung could see other people's idea. Park Jinsung makes the infamous Joker laugh as he reminds Aeon Sungko that he can't hold his bloodlust anymore. All hell was about to break loose as Park Jinsung asks him if he'll stop him. Aeon Sungko, sensing an overwhelming murderous intent, takes a jab at him, saying, Isn't he too old to be in his emo face? He gets serious as he squares off, saying he won't hold back. The classmates grow frustrated as they wonder why Aeon Sungo isn't beating him up. An Sungo observes that Park Jinsung has an unguarded stance yet has no opening solidifying his Sigma status. Jai Sr. senses the evil intent as she realizes that Park Jinsung is much different than when she faced him. She senses the eerie bloodlust realizing that she can't leave him alone like that as he's a huge threat now. Joy orders all the members to attack him with everything they have. The whole of Squad 1 rushes Park Jinsung, putting him down similar to how Tyreek Hill was pinned down by the police. Unlike Tyreek though, Park Jinsung seems to have done his part for the team. Aichan Sungko asks Ju Sr. why she interfered to which she responds by reminding him that she has a duty to protect the squad-like. Aichan Sungko says he could have handled it by himself. 
Jai Sr. points out that in the short moment they apprehended him, his sonic AA attacked them with a speed most people would not be able to react to. An Sung Go tells her to turn off her ADIA before it breaks. Jai had no idea that her ADIA was almost fully broken from that one attack. Not only did her ADIA break, but he was able to break everyone's wristband without them even realizing. In an attempt to cope with the situation, they asked if the nurse turned the wristbands off by accident. Jin Sung had done his job as the timer had already run out securing their victory. Park Jin Sung was now back to normal as his condition to break the ADIA was fulfilled. He complimented their teamwork. H. An Sung Ko reminded him that next time he will crush Jin Sung without his team's intervention. Park Jin Sung asks why there will be a next time as he's a lousy F rank still attempting to hide his power, yeah good luck with that. While leaving with his team Sung Go advises him to train more before next time which leaves Park Jin Sung in tears. The teacher's jaw is on the floor when he announces that the third squad led by Byun Gyeong has won. In the principal's office, the principal apologizes to the advisor for the poor performance. The advisor ignores this and instead tells him that it's a secret that he came. He asks the principal for the files he requested which are handed to him by the principal looking like toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. The documents are revealed to be the information files related to all the students. He finds An Sungos' file which the principal hypes up like he's like Superman calling him the pride of Hyundai school. The advisor realizes that Sungko didn't have any awards in middle school but won every battle in high school. He wonders if Sungko had a realization or reawakening before being disappointed by Adia rank. He goes on about how he only got this far because of his B rank Adia. The advisor peeks at the last paper which turns out to be the trainee Park Jin Sung. The principal giving Jin Sung no leeway at all, severely downplays his abilities. This tickles his pickle as he dives deeper into Park Jin Sung's file, going into his past records. The principal tries to stop him thinking about the school's reputation. The advisor ignores the principal and discovers that Park Jin Sung has a tragic backstory as he lost his parents at 8 years old. This is why he could not develop his ADA early on, he was abused by his F-rank uncle and aunt for a long time. On top of that, robbers broke into his house at the age of 10, leaving both his aunt and in a mental hospital. Jin Sung unlocked his Edia in the hospital the same day, he can't catch a break, can he? The advisor wondered why his Adina manifested so late when most kids unlock it at 8 years old. He read his file and wondered even though it manifested late, why was it only F rank as late realizations are usually high rank? He asks if his combat ability was also F rank, to which the principal agrees saying it was F rank when he joined the school. The advisor wonders if he is hiding his power on purpose and orders the principal that he wants to meet Park Jin Sung personally. The principal worried about the school's reputation tells the advisor that he might be transferred soon ending the topic. The principal asks the advisor why their school was put under his wing as a military school, before realizing that this might be classified information and apologizing almost pissing himself in the process. The advisor responds by telling him that they are preparing for an attack from North Korea. The advisor hopes that with this new system, a student emerges who changes from his past and gets a power-up in his idea which is unheard of. Park Jin Sung's morning routine starts with him waking up at 6 a.m. sharp and getting ready for school, he bucks himself up in the mirror saying he'll do his best today and leaves the house at about 6.30 a.m. He goes to school this early because he's stuck with cleaning and doing all types of chores for the entire school. When he reaches school he's approached by some third-year students they wonder if they should check his dress code considering he's a second-year student. Park Jin Sung reminds them that there will be no need. They soon realize that he is the beta male F-rank trainee pointing it out. Park Jin Sung copes hard saying that he's gotten pretty famous. They mock him by saying that he looks dumber than they thought and the first platoon must have let their guard down for losing to someone like him. They go on by saying his ED is just a useless tiny dagger with a good personality though. The third years asked Jin Sung how he was able to hold out against An Sung Ko thinking, even the great An Sung Ko makes mistakes sometimes. After that horrible encounter Park Jin Sung starts doing his cleaning duties cleaning the chalkboard erasers. Jin Sung wonders why they aren't using whiteboards instead even after being backed by the government, he also cleans the entire hallway. His classmates cut him some slack by saying he somehow managed to do his part by running away and asking why he didn't do that with them. The classmates joke about it calling him an S rank in unexpectedness before calling it luck, they won't let him live and won't let him die in peace, what do they want? After the battle park Jin Sung's image seemed to have gotten better, as even Byun Gyeong Gyeong didn't beat him rather asking him to fetch the math handouts which Park Jin Sung agreed to. Jin Sung why everyone stopped picking on him after thanks to the battle. This would prove to be worse as most of the students started handing him all sorts of chores this new type of torture made Jin Sung depressed. 
This is a major upgrade from the slave treatment he was receiving before. At the end of the class, the teacher informed the students that today is the last day for them to join a club, and it is mandatory for all second years to join one. Park Jinsung wonders which club he should join as he looks through the list, wondering if anyone would even let him in drawing a close resemblance to how LeBron wanted to join Diddy's freak-off. The teacher points out Park Jinsung saying and reminds him that he will have a private meeting with him if he doesn't join a club. Some of the classmates mock Jinsung by saying that no club would take an F-ranker like him. Park Jinsung ignores all the criticism which is basically abuse at this point. He looks at the list of all the clubs realizing that all of the clubs are related to military or ADA usage. The classmates make their minds up and leave the class one by one, leaving our poor boy Park Jinsung all alone. Park Jinsung weighs the options and realizes that a lot of them have minimum EDA rank requirements. He finds out that HT is the only club that doesn't have an Edina requirement being purely physical. Park Jinsung on his way to the club wonders why it was inside a popular place like the gymnasium by itself. He sees a flock of people at the entrance of the gymnasium as soon as he arrives. Jinsung wonders if he's in the wrong place and confirms it again. The first-year students mock him by calling him an F-rank upperclassman, shunning him more than Bill Cosby in the Hollywood media. They talk about how he's an upperclassman yet still a trainee and wonder if they should even address him formally. He wonders why most of the people are first graders even though they aren't even required to join a club in the first year. All the students talk about how cool the club president is as he approaches. Park Jinsung's jaw drops along with the paper in his hand as he realizes the president is none other than H. Un Sungo. All the students cheer Sungo as Park Jinsung makes his way in. H. Un Sungo is impressed, welcoming Park Jinsung, saying he didn't expect to see him. An Sungo tells all the applicants to come in and get ready. Jinsung is worried and wants to run away as thinks it would be a hassle to get involved with An Sungo. Sungo asks him where he's going. Jinsung tries to make an excuse, saying that he came to the wrong club location. Sungo asserts his dominance by telling Jinsung to come in and not to worry about much interaction as he's the only one in the club. Sungo asks him if he chose the club because there won't be a lot of people. Jinsung agrees but still tries to bullshit his way out pointing out the abundance of applicants. Sungho explains that this isn't a club anyone can just join. Jinsung replies by stating that he is below the level of all the other applicants. Sungho having none of that grabs Jinsung and forces him to participate. Sungho announces that he will start the entry test now starting with the first group. Jin Sung was in the second group so he could witness the carnage unfold firsthand. Jin Sung tells him that he's fine and doesn't need to participate which is ignored by Sun Ho in a Sigma move. Sun Ho explains that they just have to follow his exercise till the end and they will pass. The exercise is similar to a bald-headed part-time hero's routine being 30 burpees. 30 push-ups, 30 burpees again, then 30 squats in one single set. This freaks the guys out meanwhile the girls are too busy drooling over Sun Ho. Jinsung now shitting bricks at this point, looks horrified as the other contestants got out one by one due to the intensity of the training. Sungho adds another clause saying they'll have to do it at the same speed as him. A lot of the contestants in the first group are already out and Jinsung looks very concerned. Jinsung calls him a monster as Sungho is not only doing all the exercises over and over again, but he's not even changing his expression or breaking a sweat. After the whole first group falls, Sungho just stands casually, without any breaks Sungho tells the second group to come what a freak of nature. One of the girls pushes Jinsung, trying to make him go first, Jinsung who is also terrified does the same to her. One of the guys breaks the balance as he sneakily pushes Jinsung to the front calling him F rank in the process. Jinsung who is now terrified of what's about to come looks like a child who made a mistake looking at his father. Jinsung speaks everyone's mind and asks Sungho if he's even human, he further copes by saying that the one-year age difference between them has to be a lie. Surprised at Jinsung continuously hiding his strength, Sungho reminds him that this isn't something he should be saying. Sungho starts his test as Jinsung looks horrified, to everyone's surprise he's doing well. Jinsung now determined thinks that he might have trained his stamina to withstand all the bullying but this training might be too much for him. All the people giving the test look exhausted like ghosts about to haunt someone. Sung Ho in an attempt to weed more people out goes even faster. Surprisingly while keeping up Jinsung screams saying he can't do it. To the, the surprise of the spectators even after when both the other contestants failed Jinsung, still seemed to be going strong, not only was he doing the exercises he was also keeping up with Sung Ho. The people watching question if his combat ability really is F rank, Jinsung states that he already worked out at home before this as well. 
Sung Ho, like the beast he is, tells him to shut up and focus while not even changing his expression. The spectators realize that they are already on their seventh set while Jin Sung and Sung Ho seem to have gone Super Saiyan. They start to realize that Jin Sung is really good, finally giving him some credit. Sung Ho, now smiling as if he has finally found his match, commends Jin Sung for keeping up until now. Meanwhile, Jin Sung looks like he's on his wits' end, barely holding it together. Sung Ko realizes that his reaction speed in the fight wasn't a fluke, and he should be able to catch up to his full speed going even faster. Sheesh. Sung Ko looks like he's having his mob psycho 100 moment, as the others are surprised at how Jin Sung can even keep up. Jin Sung does exactly that as he goes all out. The spectators are left baffled as he's able to keep up. They seem to have gone Super Saiyan Blue and Red as the spectators witness Jin Sung go toe to toe with the nation's number one. They finally cut him some slack and begin to cheer for Jin Sung as he's getting super close and might even make it. As Jin Sung is on his last three reps, the audience roars chanting that he can do it. After a long and arduous training session, Jin Sung eventually passes, getting commended by Sung Ho in the process. The spectators who witnessed this firsthand were shocked and happy at the same congratulated him as out of everyone only Jin Sung. The F-ranked trainee was able to pass. Jinsung smiles as he falls down thinking it isn't too bad since he got applauded. Sung Ho welcomes him with open arms. Jin Sung, terrified for what is to come says he's quitting right away which is ignored by Sung Ho making Jin Sung frustrated. Sung Ho having a true bro bro moment with Jin Sung tells him that the effects of exercise are doubled when done together drawing a close resemblance to Diddy and Lebron James bromance. He's the only one who could match his freak. Jin Sung reminds Sung Ho that he would have died if he had done one more set before getting serious and asking if he hates people like him as he said in the battle. Sung Ho looks like he finally found a test subject tells him that it took one year to finally find one more member. Jin Sung realizes that he isn't listening to him at all and his hope of joining a quiet and peaceful club is completely and utterly screwed. As Jin Sung cleans the classroom at the end of the day he thinks about skipping the club. He cringes as he has way more attention on him thanks to Sung Ho. His stomach drops as the realization hits him. He has joined the same club as Sung Ho, the most popular guy at school. Being in the same club as Sung Ho Jin Sung gets picked on all the time, people are jealous, and they are sour losers in general. People ask him all the time how he even managed to get into the HT club. Sung Ho has a gorilla grip on our boy Jin Sung. Jin Sung wonders if he should break his arm but realizes Sung Ho will just treat him and make him train after he's healed. While Jin Sung is having this struggle in his mind a pretty girl who looks very similar to Raiden Shogun from Genshin Impact spots him while he is coping hard because of his situation. Jin Sung is flustered as he didn't notice the girl before as he was busy coping. She asks him if he is in this class to which he agrees wondering if they have a pretty girl like her in the class. Wanting that Hawk Tua but only receives the talk Tua as she shows him her badge revealing to be a corporal ranked student. The girl asks him if he has a title. This kicks in his muscle memory, and he says that he is Squadron 2, Platoon 10, Squad 3 trainee Park Jin Sung immediately, while performing a salute, talk about an astounding candidate. The girl is surprised and wonders how he can be a trainee, while still greeting him with respect telling him she is Corporal Kim si unlike everyone else who just mocks Jin Sung. Jin Sung goes straight to the point as he asks her why she called him. Kim si explains that she is going to be joining the second squadron in his class tomorrow. Jin Sung asks her if she transferred to which she agrees. Jin Sung welcomed her warmly saying that he will be in her care out of respect. Jin Sung realizing he has to go to hate tells Kim si that he has business to attend to before being dragged and pinned against a wall by Kim si -yeon. She puts her hands around him seemingly going for a kiss Hawk Thua doesn't seem impossible now. Jin Sung being flustered by this sudden development almost craps his pants and tells her that he needs to be somewhere trying to escape. Kim si insists that she needs a guide. Jin Sung tells her to ask someone else as he's in a rush. Jin Sung didn't want to face Sung Ho's wrath again. Kim si insists on him being the guide as she feels comfortable with him to which Jin Sung responds with when did she even see him. She replies by saying that just now making the same face as Sung Ho as she had found a test subject too. Jin Sung being scared therefore reluctantly agrees. She asks him to take her to Sung Ho which happens to play out in his favor as he's headed there as well. During this conversation, Sung Ho shows up in the background looking like a disappointed parent. Sung Ho enters the class which scares the hell out of Jin Sung. Sung Ho asks Jin Sung if he is trying to skip out on practice which he denies by saying he was about to come over. Kim Seon asks him if he's Sung Ho, 
Sung Ho puts her in her place by saying she should be respectful to her seniors. Kim si asks him if there are skill-based ranks in the school before telling him that he should be stronger than her to be considered a superior. Kim si takes a jab at him by saying she is on the same level as him. Sung Ho pissed off by this remark asks her if he should clear her doubt. This encounter looks like David and Goliath to Jin Sung as he hides behind his bag. He doesn't want to be squashed in the middle. Kim si asks Sung Ho if he's dating anyone which he denies. This doesn't surprise Jin Sung as Sung Ho works out every day. She tells Sung Ho that she hates stiffs like him, and Sung Ho assures him that the feelings are mutual. Kim si in an attempt to ask him out, tells him she doesn't care if he has a girlfriend or fiance putting him on the spot and saying they should skip the formalities as her family is conservative. Sung Ho being the muscle head he is doesn't understand what she meant. She seems to have taken the hint as she moves toward Jin Sung next and asks her if he wants to date her as they are the same height which she likes in a man. Jin Sung now blushing tells her he doesn't really know which surprises Kim si before calling him cute and giving him the signature smug anime look. She asks him what his idea in combat rank is which he confirms to be both F rank. Kim si refuses to believe that calling him a liar Jin Sung while looking disappointed confirms it. Kim si asks how someone can be F rank in both strength and I a rank to which Jin Sung points to himself saying he's living proof. Jin Sung making the impossible possible in all the wrong ways makes her surprised. Sung Ho interrupts them by telling her to go away which she doesn't do as she follows them to the gymnasium. Kim Seon impressed by seeing Jin Sung train, tells him that she sees him in a different light and asks Jin Sung if he's okay while he looks exhausted. Jin Sung wonders why she followed them as Jin Sung looking like a lamb for the slaughter. He considers this a chance to escape and he asks her to save him. She makes the same in reply saying when he even saw her annoying Jin Sung. Kim Seon asks Sung Ho why he's training with somebody like Jin Sung as he's just a trainee. Sung Ho tells her that ranks don't matter if you have a partner to exercise with bringing out that smug anime look from her again. She asks him why he's going this far with Jin Sung wondering what kind of potential he sees in him, in a Sherlock Ahem moment asking what secret he possesses. Kim si tells Sung Ho that she's seen what Jin Sung is capable of and asks him to answer her quickly. Sung Ho looks similar to Loki when he says that I've never met this man in my whole life. Sung Ho brushes it off saying she is the one who has high expectations of Jin Sung. Kim si pokes around further by asking him to reveal his power. Kim si asks Jin Sung directly which is debunked by Jin Sung as he tells her that she is mistaken and that he is an F rank whose only charm is being useless, both Kim si and Sung Ho give him the disappointed parents look. Sung Ho cuts his bullshit in half and drags Jin Sung again for the next practice. Jin Sung asks Kim si to help him as he's dragged which she promptly ignores, giving him a cold shoulder. The next day the teacher announces that they have a new transfer student joining them today it is revealed to be none other than our beloved Kim Sion, who walks into the class like an absolute baddie. The students compliment her beauty and toughness while wondering how a transfer student can join in such a weird time. Kim Sion asks the teacher where her seat is, and the teacher points her to the end of Squad 1, but she spots Jin Sung and tells the teacher she likes Squad 3 more. Without listening to another word, she makes her way to Jin Sung, who is lost in his dream thinking about yummy food. There seems to be another boy sitting next to Jin Sung. Kim si asks him to move politely, which he refuses, forcing Kim si to ask again in a more serious tone while having a joker a ha look. The boy quickly agrees and moves, not wanting any of that heat. As Kim si is sitting down beside Jin Sung, she is called out by Ji asking her who she thinks she is, and tries to affirm his position as the third squad leader. Kim si replies by asking if his military rank is higher than hers, reminding him that she is corporal, the highest rank possible in the second year, while he is still a sergeant. Jiang receives the aura loss of generations and has no choice but to agree while saying that he's the leader and she should respect him. Kim si tells the teacher that she will be sitting here, the teacher has no choice but to agree, failing to understand her logic. Kim si asks Jin Sung if he doesn't like her as she notices that he looks concerned before following it up by saying that she sat with him because she thinks she hit it off with him yesterday. While looking like a scary stalker, she gives him a look that says that they don't need to talk much to get along well. Jin Sung says he will pass getting along with her before quickly changing his mind saying it's not like he doesn't like her as her hand grips him making him sweat like a pig. The teacher is getting rather tired and comes to the point and calls her out to introduce herself. Kim Seon says that she's already seated, so she will just make her introduction from here. 
Jiang tells her that it's common etiquette to stand in front of the class to give introductions, which is shooed away by Kim Seon saying she doesn't want everyone to hear her. Kim Seon in a casual tone greets her new classmates, her classmates wonder why she's being so cheeky and that she must have done well in her previous school to have this much confidence. Kim Seon quickly clears their doubts as she reveals that she is a corporal and her idea in the infamous White Jade Goblin. Kim Seon also reveals that her family pushed for her transfer to this school and she hopes they all can improve together. Meanwhile, the class loses their mind as they realize she's from the illustrious Jade Kim family and she is heir to the White Jade Goblin idea. The teacher quiets everyone down as they are all freaking out by the presence of such a legendary person. As the legend goes the White Goblin Jade is the only idea that is hereditary. Idea can't be passed down usually, ever since the start of time there has never been a single same idea that belongs to different people as it is engraved onto one's soul. Some people hope that they could pass their idea down to make it stronger, as every step of the way will make it more sophisticated, sharper and more dangerous. However, one family succeeded in doing just that and they were known as the Kim family, the descendants of legendary King Suro. The Kims are not to be confused with the Kardashians who focused on endless education ideas and combat across several generations, unlike the Kardashians, but similar to them as they neglected their families in this pursuit. To protect their bloodline they only had intermarriages, talk about Sweet Home Alabama in it but in doing so they succeeded in obtaining an irregular idea. The White Jade Goblin is revealed to have a world soul ranking of A and the idea can manifest the White Goblin Jade itself. The White Jade Goblin however only manifested in the daughters of each generation, their populations slowly dwindled and almost ceased to exist although a glimmer of hope emerged as a child was born in the last generation who could manifest the White Goblin Jade. The child possessed immense physical and dormant abilities that far surpassed a male's, as the last swordsman capable of the highest level of swordsmanship in the Kim family, she is none other than Kim Seon. She was an elite from birth, the one acknowledged by the family in the heavens both, a true prodigy in the realist sense. Unlike the stories though she seems pretty normal as she asks the teacher if she can sit down. The teacher looks surprised and tells her that she can and quickly makes Kim Seon the vice leader of the third squadron from today onwards due to her legendary status. Jiang is embarrassed as he tries to argue with the teacher. The teacher puts him in his place by telling him to shut up. Jiang, having lost an ungodly amount of aura now, is forced to agree. Jin Sung tells Kim Seon that she is pretty famous. Kim Seon, not missing the chance to make a cheeky remark, tells him it's because she is that amazing which Jin Sung agrees to. Kim Seon tells Jin Sung that he's pretty unique as well as he has the title of an f rank trainee soldier which is unheard of. Jin Sung swallows this hard pill while looking like he's just been shot. Jin Sung sobs and tells Kim Seon to stop attacking him, and that he's an ally which she refuses promptly while laughing. Ja Young is furious and asks how dare a transfer student who came out of nowhere steal all the spotlight, which is met with a death glare from Kim Seon. The students outside the cafeteria talk about how they should change the Squad 3 leader. They consider Kim Seon to be better than Ji Young at everything including Adia's rank and combat ability. They go on by saying Ji Young gave out weird orders during the fight that only benefited him. They realize that Kim Seon is smart and good at taking the lead and giving commands, hyping her up more than one coin as they praise her charisma. They conclude by saying she would be a much better squad leader than Ji Young could ever be, hinting that it might happen soon anyway considering Kim Seon's status. Gyeong, who is eavesdropping on this conversation, gets really pissed off. During lunchtime, Kim Seon tells Jin Sung that they should eat lunch together, but Jin Sung politely refuses the offer by saying that he has his cleaning duties. Kim Seon reminds him that she doesn't have anyone to eat with, but Bro doesn't take the hint, talk about a massive fumble. Jin Sung reminds her that she is the most popular person in school at the moment and can eat with whoever she wants. Kim Seon, not being this type of person, tells him that everyone just watches from afar and doesn't even come to talk to her, which makes her sad thinking that she might be weird or something. Jin Sung reminds her that he has to clean the blackboard, dust the erasers, sweep and mop the whole classroom floor, and get the aids for the next class, so he is very busy. Kim si Yun replies by saying that all that work seems like too much for one person to do, and that even the lousy squad leader won't be able to do it, which is something Jin Sung agrees to. So Kim Seon asks him if he's doing it for the other squads as well, going on about it with a menacing killer aura while repeating that he's doing it for the whole class, isn't he? Jin Sung tells her that he only does it since he's doing other things as well, and it would be more complicated if a lot of people were doing it. 
Kim si yun doesn't take this well, she wasn't about to let our boy Jin Sung take any more Les. Kim si yun drags Jin Sung with her, but Jin Sung reminds her that he's busy but it falls on deaf ears as Kim si yun is currently consumed by rage. Talk about one protective soon-to-be wife. Kim si yun goes on by saying they are going to visit the waste of oxygen who keep giving him their chores. Kim si yun approaches some of the people whose chores Jin Sung was doing as she tells them she wants to talk about something. They ask her what it is while having worried expressions. Kim si yun asks them if they are usually in charge of the classroom cleaning, then why is Jin Sung doing it all alone? The boy starts going on about how he's an F rank and he deserves it but Kim si yun is not having any of his bullshit and covers his mouth and tells him to stop making excuses. She also warns that from now on they should do what they are assigned to do by themselves unless they want to go to the gulag. Kim si yun highlighting her queen status remarks that picking on someone weaker than yourself is really disgraceful. Kim si yun warns him by saying that she doesn't want to be disgraceful towards him, but she'll have no chance if she catches him doing this again. The boy who is almost crapping himself at this point agrees with no hesitation. Kim si yun then tells him to apologize to Jin Sung as, which he promptly does with no complaints. Kim si yun tells Jin Sung that now it's turn for the next person but Jin Sung asks if they haven't sorted everything out already but Kim si yun ignores his plea and tells him that they are going to the homeroom teacher next. The teacher, being the discriminative snake that he is, pretends to be surprised that something like that was happening to Jin Sung and puts Kim si yun in charge of dividing the cleaning duties. Kim si yun approaches her squad and tells them that she will be dividing chores from now on while handing two students the blackboard and mopping duties. They are surprised and are about to say that Jin Sung should do it before nearly having their Adam Apple squashed by Kim si yun leaving them with no choice but to agree. Kim si yun reminds them who is in charge and asks them if they object to her orders, both of them having good survival instincts and agrees to do the jobs. Gyeong spots her during this encounter prompting Kim si yun to ask him if he wants to clean as well. Ji Young tells her to at least call him squad leader but Kim si yun goes straight to the point and asks him what he wants. Ji Young looking mad says responds by saying he just wants to talk to his subordinate. But Kim goes on to say that she should just become squad leader since he's so annoying. This pisses off Gyeong as he asks her to repeat but Kim si yun replies by telling him that if he's not gonna talk, then she's just gonna leave calling him squad leader this time. Ji Young making a zero IQ play tells her to come to the rooftop after the class is over to which Kim si yun agrees, while Jin Sung secretly eavesdrops on their conversation. After the class, both of them make their way to the roof where Jin Sung follows right behind Kim si yun as he senses something is wrong. Kim si yun asks Ji Young what he wants to discuss, which makes him smirk while he asks her if she already knows. He then goes on by saying that she should understand by now as the level 1 crooks slowly emerge from behind him. Guess they were all standing in a straight line behind him for them to not be spotted immediately. Kim si yun gives zero shits at the meeting and says her squad leader is really incredible and popular as she spots a lot of people with him. Ji Young, thinking he's him, tells her she is still his squad member and he doesn't want to hurt her after the discussion. Kim si yun reminds him of his wimp nature and remarks that he can't have that discussion with all these people around by mentioning how her squad leader is really embarrassing. Ji Young gives the fake joker a laugh from Temu on clearance sale as Kim si yun gets surrounded by a whole army of Bates. He reminds his goons that they have to teach the vice squad leader a lesson that she won't ever forget in her life. Kim si yun fails to understand what he means saying that if he's serious about teaching someone like her a lesson, Ja Young, now pissed off, tells her that she will regret acting out against him, but Kim si yun reminds him how the food chain works as she reminds him that a squad leader should follow the orders of the corporal. Kim si yun further provokes Gi Young by asking if he's stronger than her and goes on by saying she's stronger than him in both Edia's rank and physical ability, and even his decisions fall short compared to hers. Kim si yun clarifies that to be above her he should be above her in at least one of those aspects. This pisses off Gi Young as he tells all the fodder to take out their ideas. Kim Si Young realizes that a lot of them have melee based ideas without any special ranged skills. Ji Young asks her if she thinks all these ideas look pathetic to her, and she refuses these allegations reverting that blame to him. Ji Young had enough of this and reminds her that if she activates her idea on campus, she will be expelled as people will sense it, which isn't the case for the weaker ideas of the others. Ja Young warns that raw strength is useless without control and she will be overwhelmed by the sheer numbers. He adds that she will regret talking back to him. 
Kim Seon thinks for a bit then tells them Sung-ho is the most famous person in their school, and asks them if they think something when they see him, ji fails to understand as he asks what she means. Kim Seon asks them if they are aware of her combat rank. ji pawns start panicking as they call this a bluff, saying that she is only a blade master without a blade. Without wasting further time, ji tells his guys to attack her and overwhelm her by sheer numbers, but Kim Seon reminds him of his incompetence and tells him he should have used his brain like this during the squad battle. Kim Seon's goblin horn appears as she adds, asking him if he forgot what they learned in class, ji is completely and utterly cooked as she reminds him that 1A rank can go against 100 people who are below their rank. The ability White Jade Goblin happens to be an A rank idea with the ability to manifest the White Jade Goblin itself, the talent being the swordsmanship, also reveals that Kim Sign's sword skills were intermediate just like Antony's football career. Young tells her that she needs to specialize to be good in one against many scenarios to qualify for being A rank. All the guys are scared regardless as their hands start shaking as well as sweating their asses off. Jiang asks why everyone is scared even when she has no weapon and tells them to attack. The guys agree trying to cope thinking it should be fine since she doesn't have a weapon. Kim Seon stands still as the attack comes towards her saying she likes his curiosity but he's being too honest with his approach as the bat is right in front of her face, making her a certified Sigma. Kim Seon stops the attack mid-air and throws the guy like a bowling ball and the rest of the guy falls like bowling pins, before saying strike. She lunges at them tossing them around like dead meat, the guys now realizing how cooked they are except that she's strong without a blade as well, and that they are nothing against an Arank Adia user. Kim Seon tries to talk some sense into him saying he gives up too fast and that's why he can't be a rank. The guy now coping hard tells her that he puts in work as well but someone like her wouldn't understand as she was strong from birth. Kim Seon goes on by saying that does a person like her who was born a genius with a rich idea know what a talentless person like him feels like? Kim Seon agrees that he has no choice but also reminds him that her overall combat ability was D rank when she started. Ji Young calls her a liar saying that her family is infamous for being powerful and she should say something that would be more believable for her to play mind games. Ji Young questions her how a person like her would have no talent from the start talk about being petty. Kim Sion agrees, saying that an A rank idea with a D rank combat ability seems very talentless. She adds by saying that she didn't want to raise a sword, but was forced due to her idea. They all call it lies making them dumber than even the two people who were scammed trying to buy the Eiffel Tower. Kim Sion tells them that they won't accept the effort she puts in, but it doesn't matter as she's proving it right now by not using her sword. Ji Young and the other guys attack her as Ji Young screams for her to shut up. Kim Seon makes quick work of them saying even without a blade they are no match for her. Only ji remains standing as Kim Seon reminds him that she left him for the last on purpose. ji starts sweating as he realizes that trash is still trash no matter how much you put together, finally understanding that quality is always better than quantity. Kim Seon reminds ji that it's over. ji being very annoyed at this point, mocks her by telling her to get it over with. Kim Seon wonders why he is confident and he must be hiding an ace up his sleeve. Kim Seon thinks even if he does it won't matter because she will destroy it anyways. Ji Young thinks as Albert Einstein from Wisha outsmarted her realizing that she's been avoiding punching faces and it might get her in trouble. Ji Young plans to blackmail her by claiming that Kim Seon was the one who beat them up for no reason. He makes the dumbest decision of his life somehow by thinking that it's a good idea to take the punch with his face. Ji Young has the survival instinct of a medium rare steak as he gets ready to take the punch hoping to get Kim Si Yun expelled claiming that the pain will be a cheap price to screw her over. To the complete shock of both Kim Si Yun and Ji Young, the punch is blocked right before impact by Jin Sung with the help of an object to absorb the shock. Jin Sung tries to play off the remarkable feat by telling Ji Young that he saved his handsome little nose from being broken. Kim Seon steps on Ji Young's hand having the last laugh. Ji Young asks if Kim Seon had brought Jin Sung as backup which she denies. Kim Seon adds by saying that he followed her on his own. This makes Jin Sung sob saying he's not welcome anywhere as as he goes in a sarcastic tone. Kim Seon begins putting two and two together as she wonders how Jin Sung was able to make it all the way from the door to her in that short period. Jin Sung was packing the heat as in such a short period of time, he was able to get between them and stop the punch midway which happened to be a full force swing. She refuses to believe that his overall combat ability is F rank, 
if he is capable of something like that. Jin Sun quickly mentions that the sun has already set and that they should go back home. Kim si looks at her hand and wonders how she got plastic pieces inside. Gyeong tells them that he'll report them to the teacher. Jin Sun asks why he'll be reported as he actually protected him. Kim si agrees, saying that Jin Sun protected his ugly face from being beaten. Gyeong thinks he's outsmarted them again with an anticlimactic Newton from Temu a hey moment, and reveals that he recorded everything. He adds to it by telling them about having a hidden camera. This goes up in flames as it is revealed by Kim si to be the same thing Jin Sung used to absorb the shock of her punch. Jin Sung fakes it by saying he thought it was some kind of decker stuck to the wall, and in the heat of the moment he decided to use it as a shock absorber. Kim si points out that the camera, his plan and his dignity, have all gone to smoke she diverts the attention as she reveals what she wants to know the most is how a trainee, like Jin Sung stopped her fist which Jin Sung tries to play it off by saying it's just pure luck. The guys wonder if her ranks are also aided by luck as well. Kim si not taking any of this tells them to stop whining and learn something from the trainee who blocked her full force punch, she adds by telling them that it is never too late to start. Yin Sung tells Kim si that she was just like Sung Ho at that moment which Kim si takes as an insult calling him a pighead. This leaves Gyeong and his pawns disappointed and completely and utterly defeated as they scream. We can hear another scream as we see a flashback from Jin Sung's life as he can be seen approaching a person whose limbs appear to be chopped off. The person calls him a monster, begs him to not come near him. It is revealed to be Jin Sung's aunt as well as his uncle who abused him for as long as he could remember. He goes towards the uncle and asks him why he was abused again and again in a psychotic and creepy way, giving even Drake's creepiness a run for its money. He smirks as Jin Sung wakes up in sweat and tears realizing it was a dream. Jin Sung looks horrified as he wonders why he had that dream again. Jin Sung fails to realize that that very power would one day make him a crazy but beautiful hero who isn't afraid to kill an enemy as slowly and painfully as possible while craving inhumane levels of violence. Would our boy become a demon in human shape, or will he somehow control his ability till he can fight like a normal human without his deadly aura? To know that, like this video and subscribe to your channel so you can stay updated for the next part. Till then, peace out.